Welcome everybody to our city council. Uh, today's May 17th and the time is 7.02. We're calling our meeting to order. Could we please stand uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance? Please remain standing for a moment of silence for our first responders and military members. Thank you. Monica, we get a roll call, please. Roll call, Council Member Soto. Council Member Moran. Present. Council Member King. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Garcia. Mayor Aguilar. Present. For the record, Council Member Soto and Mayor Pro Tem Garcia are not in attendance, but their absence is not ex it's excuse, sorry. Thank you, Monica. Uh, during, uh, for closed session announcements, we actually moved our closed session to after a regular meeting. Um, so we'll be, um, we'll be conducting that afterwards. Um, Council, any changes to agenda? I see any at this moment. Mayor, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, in that right, we uh, don't need the uh, litigation closed session items. It's going to be. Okay, thank you. Uh, just real quick, uh, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, this is not in regards to the consent, uh, consent agenda, right? No, this is uh, right. just. Uh, okay, thank you. I know that I think there'll be some items being pulled from the consent calendar for discussion or presentation. Well, once we get there, we could do that. Um, so no changes to agenda. Uh, citizen comments at this time. Um, this section allows uh, this section of the agenda allows members of the public to address the city council on any item not otherwise on the agenda. Members of the public, when recognized by myself, should come forward, and identify themselves. Comments are normally limited to three minutes. Um, for items which are on the agenda this evening, members of the public will be provided an opportunity to address the city council as each item is brought up for discussion. Do we have any citizen comments at this time? Anybody on the phone? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our award presentations and proclamations. We have one item tonight, presentations by Jamie Holt, and she's the Chief Communications Officer for San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District, air quality efforts in the San Joaquin Valley. Thank you for coming tonight, appreciate it, appreciate the time. Thank you all so much. I also want to introduce next to me here, and I'm gonna give her the microphone uh, right at the end of my presentation for just a minute, um, Council Member Deborah Lewis from Los Banos. Council Member Lewis is actually a member of our governing board. She's one of the five city representatives, and she has taken it uh, kind of under her uh, authority or responsibility to make sure that we're going out to cities, especially those in Merced County, and tell you about what we're doing and especially about our grant programs and how there might be funding for uh, both things uh, the city can do and then also things that the residents can do. So I'm gonna give her the microphone here in just a minute, but I'm gonna move forward with my presentation. We really have an unparalleled air quality problem here in the San Joaquin Valley and it's not that we pollute more than other areas, we actually pollute less than more pristine areas such as the Bay Area or even some places nice as Lake Tahoe, but we are in this bowl, and this bowl tends to trap pollution. Uh, we, especially during the winter months when we have those stagnant conditions, the pollution gets trapped by the mountains that surround us, really has nowhere to go, and our pollution levels can increase. We also get pollution from a variety of different sources. Uh, this is that inversion layer I was talking about. During the winter time, we have a variety of pollution sources. They might be uh, mobile sources such as trucks, uh, cars, uh, uh, locomotives, uh, even that uh, wood burning stove that you might have in your home, industry, ag, they're all contributing to pollution. During the winter time especially, it gets trapped under our inversion layer and really has nowhere to go. One of the biggest challenges we have in the valley is also that we're a major transportation corridor. Most of the goods coming through the ports in California actually go through the valley, 
and heavy duty trucks are our biggest pollution source in the valley. And there's a lot of work going on right now at the state level and the federal level to make sure that we're seeing the reductions from those heavy duty trucks uh, that are needed to come into compliance some, with some really tough federal guidelines. We have seen significant improvement over the last 20, 30 years. Uh, it's really a testament to the work being done by industry, residents, agencies, to make sure that we are, for better or worse, one of the most regulated areas of the United States. And we really are seeing those improvements. Some of the things that we really focus on at the Air District, we really wanna make sure that we're being innovative. Some of the things that you see us doing in the Valley Air District, it's really the first place that it will be done in the United States. And uh, we've got uh, up in Modesto, a project at a, at a PepsiCo facility where they uh, manufacture potato chips, where they're looking to basically zero out all of their emissions, so they're not gonna have any emissions coming off of that facility. They're gonna have electric heavy duty trucks and chargers and solar panels and just a wide variety of ways that, that they're cutting edge when it comes to the way they do business. We also work really hard to make sure that we're being innovative in the transportation sector. Mobile sources are the biggest source of emissions in the valley, that's cars and trucks. Those stationary sources for which the local Valley Air District is responsible, those stationary source emissions coming off of factories, uh, coming off of uh, any type of industrial facility you might have, those have been reduced by about 90%. So we're really beginning to shift and look at the transportation sector so we can get, get those much needed reductions in that sector as well. And then we're doing a lot within communities to really make sure that our residents, and especially some of our uh, historically underserved residents, are getting the tools and resources they need to make those changes so that they can be driving a cleaner vehicle, doing cleaner yard care. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. So grants for businesses and public agencies. So these are grants that the city of Livingston can take advantage of today. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a clean fueling infrastructure program that basically works to get um, heavy duty infrastructure, be it a CNG facility or an electric, heavy duty electrical uh, infrastructure project up and running. Maybe it's for um, electric school buses to charge. Maybe it's for uh, 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 fleet vehicles to charge. We've got a program that can help you out with that. We've got a clean green yard machine program that will help you take uh, the landscape equipment that the city might use for parks or maybe a school district might use and replace that landscaping equipment with electrical. I will tell you about seven years ago, we had a, a lawn care conference and the technology, we were all kind of like, oh, the electric stuff's getting there, it's okay for maybe your personal lawn, but is it gonna be able to do you know, a, a, a high school football field and still be running? The technology is much, much better than it used to be, and there is a lot of potential out there for those heavier uh, commercial grade landscaping equipment. We've got an off-road equipment replacement program. Uh, if you have everything from, um, maybe it's an emergency vehicle, maybe it's a fire truck, and you wanna look at getting a cleaner fire truck in place, something like that, or any other type of kind of off-road equipment that might be out there. We've got a locomotive replacement program. We also have charge up electric vehicle charging infrastructure. And this is a great one. And it, you guys probably already have a handful of EV charging stations in Livingston. You're right on the 99. We'll basically pay almost the entire cost to put electric vehicle charging stations in. And then depending on how you want to structure it, it might be the type of station where folks have to slide a little card and they pay for the electricity, or maybe it's at a location where you all want to pay for the electricity. But uh, that's a great program because it's a really high dollar program. We can come in and, and replace older heavy duty trucks. 
Um, we have a drive clean electric vehicle rebate program. If the city needs new fleet vehicles, maybe it's uh, going from a, you know, a, a Ford Taurus that's uh, old and out of date and you wanna get into a, 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 a EV uh, Bolt or even a Tesla if you wanna be crazy, which they don't allow us to get Teslas at our office, but maybe you guys do things differently. Um, you can basically get $20,000 to swap out that vehicle. It's a really good deal and it's uh, up to $100,000 per agency per year. So uh, that's a great program, lots of money there. And then I always say technology advancement program or other state and federal pilot, pilot projects. If you have an idea, our board members wanna hear about it and they are always looking for that innovative new, maybe it's never been done, but it looks really good and there's a really good story to tell for it, then we'd be happy to hear that as well. We also, you all have an agricultural community around you. We have a whole suite of grants that are specifically for ag operations, ag pump replacements, alternatives to open burning. Open burning is actually being phased out. If you see open burning in the area, there's a pretty good chance that it might be an illegal burn and you're happy to give us a call and we'll check it out. It's gonna be pretty much totally phased out by January 1st, 2025. And because of that, we have some very significant grant programs to assist the ag community in making that transition. We have an electrified dairy feed mixer program, an ag truck replacement program, a low dust nut harvester replacement program, a tractor replacement program, and a zero emission little ag UTV program. Now you have a few people in the audience and you all are residents as well. These are three of our most popular programs and they're really for residents. And if you want more information, you want flyers, you want mailers, you want us to reach out to the community even more, I'm happy to do that. One's called Drive Clean in the San Joaquin. It has three arms. The first is a repair component where we come usually on a Saturday, we do it about every other Saturday, to locations up and down the valley. Cars line up at sometimes as early as 6 a.m. and they will uh, basically get an emissions test and if it looks like they are gonna have trouble passing smog, we'll give them a $600 voucher for them to go in there, get their car repaired so they can pass smog. And that rotates up and down the valley about every other Saturday. We also have what we call clean car clinics where we'll, we'll come usually it's to like a a little local restaurant and we'll basically take folks kind of through the same program but they don't have to go to one of that events one of those events the next program which is incredibly popular is a replacement program if you have a 2006 or older vehicle we will work with you to give you ninety five hundred dollars to replace that vehicle with an electric vehicle. If you wanna go with a hybrid vehicle, it's a little less, but the, the goal there is to get some of those older, higher polluting vehicles off the road with something cleaner. The last one, if you just wanna go out and buy an electric vehicle, there's lots of rebates out there. We have a $3,000 rebate. The state has, I believe it's a $2,000 rebate. And then you can sometimes pair those with maybe the utility company rebate or other rebates that might be out there. So you can sometimes cut a fairly significant portion of your cost of your car off. The next one, in addition to that clean green yard machine program for commercial use, we also have a program for a residential use. And if you are going to turn in an older lawn, gas powered lawnmower, we'll give you up to $250 on a new electric one. Be about 50% of the price. That's option two is what I tell everyone. If you're gonna go buy electric yard equipment or you're gonna go buy yard equipment and you're willing to buy electric, we wanna nudge you over the line. You don't have to replace anything. We'll just give you a rebate. We'll give you a flat rebate you can buy a mower and we might give you $50. You can buy an edger, we'll give you $50. You can buy all those different things and we'll just give you a rebate for making the choice to go electric. Uh, lawn care products tend to be really dirty. Those little engines, those little gas powered engines that are on those products put out of a lot of pollution. So we really want folks to begin to make that switch. And I just saw at Costco over the really nice pieces of equipment out there. Last but not least, we've got our burn fireplace or stove 
and we'll give you, depending on your income level and depending on where you live, up to $3,000 to replace it with a gas insert. I will tell you, I did this personally. turn on with a remote and it's fabulous so we'll give you up to three dollars depending on level for that program I understand that just because we live in a but we're going to be innovative all of this is really about improving life and public health in the valley and we really focus on um, um we advocated a state and federal that more funding is coming to the valley so that we continue to run these programs and I really have to say I'm 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 so proud of the work that we've done and the hard work that's been done by our governing board we also have an app I encourage you to download especially when air quality is poor when we get into the wildfire season those summer late summer months over the winter we can tell you what air quality looks like and feel free to reach out to our, us on social media or on our website and with that i'm going to let council member lewis just kind of wrap us up and then i'll take any questions thank you jamie uh, first of all i want to thank the city of livingston for being one of the cities to elect me to sit on this board and represent merced county um, as she indicated it's it's my mission to make sure that the information gets out, especially especially to Merced County residents, um, because I, I think generally we haven't really had enough information coming from the board to this county. There's so much uh, money out there. I mean, lots of money, millions and millions of dollars. I think what uh, our budget this year is like 500 million dollars. I'd like to have, that's yeah, our, just our grant that's. Budget. Yeah, I'd like to have some of that for my city just for operations. But nonetheless, with all the money out there, this is the opportunity for people to take advantage of the different programs that are offered. Uh, we had a tune-up day in Los Banos where people brought their cars in to the uh, get in contact with Jamie, have your staff contact her to set up a tune-up program here. You, you'll be quite surprised. I think the first one that we did uh, last year was over 125 people that showed up. Um, in some of the bigger cities like Modesto, Fresno area, you got four and 500 people lining up for one day. Um, so it, it's a good program. Whether we agree with what's going on in our, in, in our state or not, it's still a good program. I would encourage you to try to get your, your residents to get involved and especially those who are in need of another car and can't afford it. Uh, these incentives that, that are out there, it's not just for new cars, it's for used cars as well. Um, there are also uh, uh, some new grant money that just came down for school districts to replace their buses. I think they are offering them 400000 per bus, which is about what a bus costs. So it's basically getting a free bus mm -hmm. with charging stations. So um, there's just money out there to help the city, to help your school district, and to help your farming community to be able to um, reduce the pollution that we have in our valley. So thank you for having us both here today, and I'm going to turn it back over to Jamie. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you all might have. Well, thank you so much for the presentation and uh, the PowerPoint. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of great opportunities out there uh, for us to really explore. Uh, Council Member Lewis, welcome to the city of Livingston. Um, so yeah, thank you for the information. And you know, I want to officially invite you uh, and let's, let's make an event. Um, you know, let's let's. Um, bring those services and resources to our community. It'd be great to have an event like that in Livingston. Uh, so we, I know we will shortly be in contact with you to, to, uh, to make something happen. So thank you so much for taking the time. Council, do you guys have any other uh, questions or anything else? Yes, uh, well, first of all, thank you both for being here and taking the time to bring this information. I, I previously have had heard about one or two of the programs, and actually just last week I heard about that lawnmower replacement program, and, and you know, um, I think there's also some great opportunities. Um, and definitely, um, I think uh, um, I will 
be more than willing to participate in future meetings and along with the city manager, especially in regards to, you know, like uh, uh, the mayor was uh, mentioning um, a couple of the programs and one of, one of them specifically will be the EV charging stations. Um, as we're growing, I, I think we, you know, uh, this, is a, this is a good opportunity for us to think ahead and start planning for additional or for uh, charging stations here, uh, especially um, being right off the freeway. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, and I was wondering, would it be okay if we're able to share that uh, presentation out on social media and, and you know, uh, I, I think it will be another way to really kind of bring it out and let people know uh, where to go, what's up, what are some of the things available and uh, just great opportunities and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, last thing I, I just wanted to say and I just thought about it, uh, perhaps if you want to put a flag on your web page uh, to lead people to mm -hmm. the website to help them get there and, and uh, mm -hmm. um, be able to share this information, that might be another helpful way of doing it as well. Yeah, absolutely, it sounds like a good idea, but no, I was nodding to our city manager about some of those uh, programs. I know we have used, uh, taken advantage of some of the, some of the programs, um, but definitely there's a lot more that we could, uh, you know, seek and, and explore. So uh, thank you both of you for coming today. Any other questions at this time? Okay. Just one more, right, go ahead. real quick. I know that this program is, I've seen a similar program uh, through another grant, but since you're talking about replacing lawnmowers with electric ones, is there such a thing as replacing the entire lawn? That way we don't have to use the lawnmower anymore at all and as part of your programs? We right now don't have a an artificial turf program, and I have seen those as well, putting in artificial turf. Some of the water agencies have done that type of thing because you don't have to water them. Um, it's definitely something that we can take back and check with our um, our district about, our, our, our grants team about to see if there's funding out there. A lot of our funding comes from the state and federal government with really specific kind of you know, hoops you have to jump through to, to uh, make them work, but that's definitely something that I, I'm happy to take back and chat about. That'd be great. Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you so much for your time tonight. I um, appreciate the information. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm going to go ahead and move on to city staff announcements and reports. Vanessa, do we have any anybody tonight? Yes, Mayor, Council Members, good evening. We have a Public Works um, Department report and a Recreation report. Thank you. So we have Public Works, Tony, going up first. Yes, going in alphabetical order, Public Works first. Perfect, <laughs> sounds good. Okay, good evening, Mayor, Council, Vanessa. Uh, quick update on a few of our Public Works projects. Uh, I know the anticipated Lacero Park playground is really uh, taking a turn for the worse for us uh, due to problems from the manufacturer. They're having parts uh, from overseas that are being, you know, really taking a long time to, to land here. Uh, approximate date right now, we're looking at like July 7th. If anything changes, we'll be notified and we'll let you guys uh, know as well. Uh, so uh, one of the other CD B sewer projects uh, still underway. They're uh, going and digging out all the water valves, sewer valves, and everything that needs to be uh, raised and put level. And as soon as they're done, hopefully, it's looking like maybe sometime next week. And as soon as they get done with that, they will start with the striping, the stop bars, uh, 25 mile an hour, and all the other signage that goes with that. Uh, project. Uh, this week we also had our solar project that has started delivering parts out at our wastewater treatment plant. They have a temporary fence being put up. Uh, they, like I say, they have been dropping off uh, transformers and other parts. They'll be continuing that this week. Uh, also Monday, wastewater treatment plant, we had a 12-inch uh, uh, rupture on our sewer line out at the wastewater by oxidation 
by the uh, headworks that sends water back to the oxidation ditch. Uh, our staff caught it early Monday and uh, it's a little bit large for us. This uh, main line is about close to 12 to 15 feet deep. It's a 12 inch main. Uh, it also blew a, uh, a uh, check valve. So Conco West was asked to come out and give us a hand. They are working with our crews and, and uh, our contract engineers aware. Uh, Jared, he's also aware of what's going on. He was out today. So we've been working on this project for a couple of days. Uh, because of the massive uh, line and the depth of it, uh, we're having to reroute our sewer. So it's being uh, rerouted from uh, the main sewer into the main line sewer into, instead of going to the headworks, it's being rerouted into the oxidation ditch. Uh, Conco anticipates maybe by the end of the week, if everything goes good, that that will be uh, repaired. So any questions? Mayor, if, if yeah, I may um, yes, share ahead. that. This is something that it happened um, in our sewer in our sewer treatment plant on Monday. So um, we I've been working with Tony to take care of this emergency. Um, obviously, we had to get outside help. Uh, so Conco West is providing that outside help and uh, that technical expertise in the equipment as well because it's pretty large. So uh, with that said, we will be bringing forward. This is something that it was, it's, as an emergency, it's not something that it was budgeted in our line item for the sewer uh, fund. So we will be bringing an item um, in, in the future once we know how much um, this emergency repair um, it's, once it's complete, we will bring an item for council for ratification. Thank you. Uh, thank you for information. Council, I know council has some questions. So this, this issue in no way affected any of the service to the residents? Negative. Right? It was all at the wastewater treatment plant. We okay. may, uh, contained it there and, and uh, we got emergency repairs going as soon as, the, by the end of the day, so it did not back up anybody. Okay, so there was no contamination outside of the area. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right, and um, um, I know I called you maybe, I think it was about a week and a half ago. It was during the weekend. I forgot if it was a Saturday or a Sunday uh, in regards to a, uh, uh, a water main that broke at a resident's home on, I think it was on 6th, 7th, or 8th Street. Yes, it was um, repaired. It was repaired. Yes, it was repaired. It was a uh, residence. Uh, we had a couple issues with the new boxes, but we were able to get in there, open them up, and shut them off. W was that, I haven't been out there and I haven't been in touch or they haven't called me back yet. Right. <laughs> but I, my understanding was that while they were doing the uh, alley, um, the meter boxes, what happened is the meter boxes have a special locking nut on there. So we had to go and we're still in the process of getting some extra uh, locking nuts to be able to take those valves off, off the lids, the lids. And that's one thing that actually took the longer. The, uh, our staff, our on-call staff uh, came out. He had a problem getting that nut off. He went back to the shop, got it back, got it on. And then uh, I also called the resident after uh, to make sure everything was fine. And he said, yeah. Okay, so, so it's just, it has a cover and Correct. it's bolted and it was just having a hard time getting that top off, the cover off to be able to get to the valve. That's Correct. what it was? Correct. Okay, all right. Okay, well, well thank you. And, and I normally don't like to call people, you know, anyone unless it's, no. you well, know. We, but we take, that's our job, you know, yeah. we take care of the community. And I mean, you know, we're all on call. We have staff on call and when they need help, I'm also available. Yeah. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, just a quick questions, a um, couple questions. Um, so I know you, you mentioned the signing of the streets, the crosswalks, that I know uh, they've been working on that, but I know there's, you said there's gonna be uh, still work to do. There's still a few areas that we need to target that. Um, another thing, like I really wanted to advocate, and I know we've, this com has come up in the past, regarding a crosswalk on Dwight and Walnut. Um, a lot of people, especially like during the Sweet Potato Festival, uh, they park their cars along Walnut, 
but there's no crosswalk going into the, the actual sports complex. There's none corner, there's none, uh, you know, along the, the housing development. Um, so I know I've brought it before. I know there's a pending project there, sidewalk project. I know that that was expressed that it would be done at that time, but I'm really concerned. Um, uh, even some, we could put something right now, um, and obviously once the sidewalk is completed, you know, a fix that, but it's just, I know people park along, are along that way and then they cross the street and there's traffic and, and uh, you know, just having a, a, a crosswalk there where cars could visibly see it better. Um, I think will make a difference or uh, in regards to safety. Uh, so I, I do want to advocate for that. We could take a look at it and see what we could do. Um, I know, like I said, there'll be a sidewalk project being done there and probably gonna have to redo it, but um, I think it's worth us, uh, checking that out and putting something temporarily just for the safety of, of the community. And then especially with sports and stuff, people do park across the street and cross and, and there's little kids and so, I think um, it's worth taking a look at that. If you guys could please follow up with that. And I know um, there'll be, in regards to our landscaping, um, some, I think it's coming up, Vanessa, or coming up soon. Um, yes, Mayor, we are evalu well, we put out the landscaping RFP. It was um, due for uh, bids to come out, to be turned into the city May 4th. Uh, unfortunately, we have not received um, enough bids or uh, bids that um, that conform with the requirements of the city. So we are looking at um, extending this this um, RFP and um, getting more bids that will that we will be able to e evaluate and bring forward to council for recommendation. Awesome, thank you. And then uh, I don't know if it was brought up to us or not, but the street sweepers it was delivered recently, right? Not not long ago. Yeah, that last yeah. presentation. <laughs> oh, did I you? Okay. A, I know we had a lot of equipment, but yeah, yeah. It, it's it's up and running. I see. I mean, when I went to go visit you guys, I, I, I was able to check it out. So yeah, yeah so it's up it looks and running. nice. Awesome. It's working good then. Yep. Yeah. Yes. All right. Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, just real quick, and I think if you can check on right on the corner of Robin and Lilac Avenue, there's that subdivision that is, so after Lilac North is heading northbound is, is like a, has, I think it's a two lane. Right. But exiting off Lilac and into Robin, especially if you're turning left, that's tr that turn is kind of tricky and up to a point, a little bit dangerous. And I know that probably, uh, if you get a chance, drive by and see if there's any trees or bushes that could be, that you might be able to trim to make it a little bit more safer for people that are turning left. I know it's been a while and I forgot to mention that before. Uh, uh, another resident just, I don't know how long ago did they, they had a, I guess a fender bender there, but it's, it's always been kind of like on my radar and I just re remember, but I don't know if there's anything that you would be able to do in regards to any trees or branches, bushes in that area. Yes, we'll look into that. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, I got a quick question, Tony. So after hours, do you guys have some kind of phone number where residents, if some kind of water breaks, who do they contact? For us, all our on-call staff goes to the police department. Okay. So every emergency goes to the police department, then depending if it's for our uh, operators or our streets, then they'll uh, call the person that's on call for that. Thank you. You got it. Thank you so much. Susanna Hernandez. Um, I think somebody's just logging into the phone, but thank okay. you so much for the information, appreciate That's it. That's our consultant. Oh, is here. it? It's good. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. We have recreation. Good day, good city to be in. Um, last night, well actually let me start with Saturday. The pancake breakfast was 
off the charts. It was so fun. If you guys haven't been to a pancake breakfast, you get to see everybody that you don't ever get to see. Yes. And you're sitting around eating and just shucking and jiving. It was just really, good times. it was like old home week. So mark your calendar for next year and try to make it out there. Um, music in the park happened last night. If you guys didn't hear it, it was really amazing. One of well, all of the bands that are playing are locals, people that have grown up here in Livingston, and they may have moved away, but still, you know, their roots are here. And it was really good. Next week, our very own Rhythm Blenders are gonna be playing, and last night, the dance floor was packed. So if you weren't able to come see it, you should come and bring your dancing shoes. It's at uh, six o'clock next week, and then the rest of the week, it starts at seven. Um, the Color Run is this Saturday. And so I do have a job for all of the city council per the mayor's request. And you guys will be herding runners. You're gonna put them in their corrals and release them when the whistle blows. So um, I will fill in the mayor and then he can organize and conquer. Sounds fun. Um, so we'd still have openings if you feel like you want to be a part of the color run, you can come down to city hall. Um, and you can sign up. You won't get the shirt because those have already been ordered and actually are in, um, but it is for the color kit. You get everything else and a great time. So um, if you can't even make it to City Hall, run the, the form off online and put a check in the drop box at City Hall and we'll take it as long as it's before Friday night. Uh, and then all of you that may be thinking about joining a service club, tomorrow night I'm the guest speaker for the Lions Club. Um, it'll be right here at 6.30, so come on down and um, enjoy the evening with a bunch of great volunteers and worker bees. So, um, and with that... Thank you, Jackie. Um, I have a quick question. Sure. I, um, I know that this was brought up before. Are we getting a banner um, for Main Street? I have it. You have it? Okay. I just got to get it to Public Works to cut the wind slots in it, but I have it. Awesome. So, as soon as I... Let's put it up. Yeah. yeah. Council, any other questions? Okay. Questions? Anybody? Actually, um, just a comment. I, I uh, within the last few weeks, I've been getting some inquiries, you know, about everything in regards to the centennial uh, from surrounding communities. They're they're they know about it. And they are planning on being here. Uh, so that means that uh, everybody's doing a really good job about getting it out there about the different activities in regards to the uh, centennial celebration. So I know that uh, uh, there's people in Fresno that I talked to and they're like, you know, they're like, when is this? I said, well, there's a lot of things going on, but this date is going to be, th you know, the big, the big, the big uh, weekend. So I, I've been sharing that, uh, that calendar. So uh, you guys are doing a great job and, and, you know, like I tell them, it's like we only get to celebrate 100 years. I, we're probably not going to be here for uh, the next one, so might as well make it big. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Mm -hmm. Council, any other questions for Jackie at this time? No? Okay. I'll see you on Saturday. It'll be fun. Good times. Any other staff? Oh, <laughs> yes, go ahead. Sorry. I was so excited about the successes I forgot to tell you guys we are short 20 volunteers for the color run so if any of you out there have nothing to do I need people to throw color on people I need you to hose people down it'll be really fun jobs but I need 20 of you so if you could call the office 394-8830 we shall sign you up sounds good thank you any other staff Vanessa um, no other reports mayor Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the city manager announcements and reports. Um, yes, good evening. Real quick, I just wanted to share that. Uh, city staff has been coordinating with the consultant for our general plan and um, into resuming the, uh, the general pl plan process as it was identified in our strategic uh, goal session back in February. So uh, what we're thinking is that we will be putting together a workshop. It's going to be a general plan update 101 uh, workshop for, for our city council. Um, we're we're hope, 
hopeful that the planning commissioners will also be able to attend and, uh, and the public. So that will be coming up in the next couple of um, weeks, if not in the next month or so. Um, on the same token, um, I just also wanted to give a quick update on um, back in April, the council also approved the reinstitution of um, uh, the delinquency process for our water, um, for our utility accounts. And uh, along with that, there we were tasked, our, our city staff was tasked to look at other venues in which we can provide some relief um, to our um, utility customers. So um, our finance team was able to secure from the State Water Resources Control Board um, $24,000 to provide relief to the sewer um, accounts for um, the uh, outstanding or the, um, the, the delinquent um, accounts that we had up until the time in which we submitted this application. So um, according to the state guidelines, we have 60 days to provide um, allocation of this uh, funds. So we will be working on um, setting an allocation that it's equitable among all of the um, residents and, um, and, and the accounts that were submitted for this program. Um, I can share with you that um, at the time of this application, 69 of our um, residential accounts will be provided some sort of relief for their um, delinquent um, or the um, outstanding invoices on the sewer side. So um, that was very, um, very great news that we received. We are also continuing to look into other programs um, to provide farther relief to those um, customers with, um, with, with, with serious delinquent um, accounts. And we will be providing an update to council once we receive more guidance from the state. Sounds good. That's good news. Um, council, questions? Vanessa, um, uh, that's great to hear. Is that for residents to participate, is that automatic, automatically done by the city or do they still have to apply and, and qualify and all that, is, or is that automatic? Uh, at the time when we submitted this application, which was back in April, um, we had to provide supporting documentation. So it is going to be, um, the relief is going to be allocated with the residential account numbers that we provided to the state. So, and, and they will be tracking on, on that, um, that the, it matches what we submitted on the application as well. So. Um, there's no need for our residents to provide any kind of um, request to be applied. We will be doing that on our side. And they will be getting a notice because it's part of the um, state water resources um, requirements that we provide notice to our customers and we have a 60 day window to do that. So we'll be working on that. And kudos to my finance team that they, they're working on this and pushing very hard to get it complete um, by the timeline. Any other questions for Vanessa? Council? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move on to city council member announcements and reports. Council member King? I have nothing to report. Council member Jose Moran? Uh, yes, um, this last month has been quite busy. Um, in Late uh, April, I had an opportunity to attend a Latino elected officials conference, uh, and it was mostly related. There was a lot of information on how to be better prepared as a city. Um, and, uh, you know, before the pandemic, we never really had, uh, many cities were not even thinking about, you know, what to do in certain s situations because we never thought about a pandemic. Um, other municipalities have thought about, you know, how to e evacuate, especially if they're near uh, oh, the water or near uh, where there's a high fire risk and stuff like that. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, uh, great resources out there that uh, uh, 
um, for cities like us and to be uh, better prepared. And so there was definitely um, a lot to be learned that was shared by either by other elected officials or what has worked um, and what has not worked. Also, in, on, the, um, on the 7th, actually, we had, we were able to participate in the uh, band review for the city of Livingston. It was, it was the first time probably in over 25 or 30 years that since we had a band review. Um, and along with that, um, the city, public works, uh, PD, everyone, recreation, everyone, every department I believe was involved in somehow assisting, supporting that event and, and uh, um, everything went very well. Uh, everything, well, for the most part went very smooth considering it was the first time in that this has been done again. Um, we had a lot of uh, um, visitors from out of town, which is great. They were able to come to Livingston, and uh, uh, so um, thank you to everyone that was involved in one way or another to make this happen. Um, I also had an, uh, I was invited to do a presentation in regards to how cities work and how elected officials are able to participate and partake in, in, um, in getting things done in their respective uh, communities, and this was for uh, uh, a parent leader training institute uh, for Merced County residents. Um, also, uh, as Jackie already re reported, uh, I'm also the liaison to the uh, Recreation Commission, and I attended the meeting on the 28th of April. Um, April 30th, Oh, okay, so that weekend from April, sa Saturday, April 30th and May 1st on Sunday, I was around the county um, recruiting vendors for our uh, sweet potato festival. So there were some that I liked and I, you know, gave uh, the recreations department information. Some that like, you know, um, they were either coming from too far and stuff like that, but I was still, provided information on, 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 um, on our events that we have here and hopefully they will have a, an opportunity to participate and also learn more about Livingston and all the great things that we have here. So Jackie, I'm, I'm sure you, you'll be, you will be getting, if not yet, um, uh, some new vendors from outside the area. And uh, on May 4th, I had uh, uh, the opportunity to participate and attend the uh, police officer in dispatch um, Officer of the Year Award in, in Merced. Um, it was great, you know, it was great to be able to see and hear from, uh, from the officers and the awardees uh, themselves, um, some of their experiences and, 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 uh, and the reason that they were selected as um, um, Officers of the Year. And, and it was just great to see everyone there. So, um, and I, I really enjoyed the dinner and, and the uh, company of uh, uh, members from the police department and, um, and um, a lot of other of officials from other cities were there too, so. Um, and on May 5th, uh, Thursday, there was a Cinco de Mayo celebration at the high school. And that is something that has been taking place every year, every year, every year. And I don't know if you've been to the uh, uh, old gym at the high school both sides of the bleachers were full. I mean, to the point to where uh, it's a good thing that we did not have uh, no fire department there, because otherwise they would probably shut it down because there was people at the entrances and just, just, just there was no more space. So uh, it, it, it was pretty full. Uh, and it was great to see uh, a lot of members from the community being present and participating uh, at that event. And um, yesterday, it was great to be there at the uh, Music at, at Memorial. Um, and it, it looks like it's gonna be a, a great summer on Mondays and, and, and a Tuesday, uh, especially after, uh, I think it's at the end of the month uh, that it's gonna take, on to, uh, take place on Tuesday. So, but every, other than that, it's gonna take place on every, uh, on every Monday. So everyone out there, make sure you uh, save those dates and put it on your calendar. Music at Memorial every Monday. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councilwoman Maria Soto.
I don't believe I have anything to report, but just an announcement for Memorial Day. There will be a um, honoring for our memorial services for our uh, service members at Memorial Park at 5 p.m. So also mark your calendars for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to mayor announcements and reports. Um, I have a few things. Um, after another round of COVID, I was able to make it to the MCAG One Voice trip in Washington, D.C. Uh, it's an annual trip, advocacy uh, trip from the county and jurisdictions in the county from each city. Um, I was able to represent Livingston along with our city manager, Vanessa. Um, we met with different um, federal agencies such as FEMA. Um, we also got an opportunity to meet staff from our senators, uh, our Senator Alex Padilla. So it was a, a great opportunity to advocate for the needs of the town uh, and, the, and the county as a whole. Um, our platform uh, specific to Livingston was our, our needs with water, uh, not only infrastructure, uh, but quality. Uh, so we were able to advocate at that level. Uh, another uh, item we advocated for was the platform for our um, ACE train. Um, and, and transportation hub that we're calling it. So it was, uh, you know, productive. It's always good to have a seat at the table and represent the city in, um, in those type of trips and those kind of, um, um, you know, as a group, as a whole, as a county. Um, so there was a, a whole lot of other uh, items uh, that county and other jurisdictions brought forward. So it was uh, very productive. Um, I want to acknowledge that our um, assistant chief, David Bates, is here. Um, and uh, as you guys heard, we had our pancake breakfast this past weekend, very successful. Um, you know, we appreciate the support from the community every year um, that we have it, and it's good times. Everybody comes out, um, you know, excellent breakfast. Uh, the guys at the station, you know, everybody put in, puts in work um, the day of the event, but it takes a lot to organize it, sell tickets, promote it. Uh, so, you know, thanks to the fire department, our guys, and thanks to the community that came out and supported this event once again. Uh, the proceeds, you know, are used towards uh, much needed fire equipment and um, medical equipment. So, so thank you to the community uh, and everybody that was there. Jackie, thank you for showing up. Appreciate it, guys. Um, you know, this weekend is busy weekend. We attended the baseball fundraiser, uh, the high school baseball team's fundraiser, the 5150 fight night. Um, also had attended the band review. Um, attended the music in the park yesterday. Um, and we had another uh, community event on Sunday um, where I was able to work with the United Farm Workers Union, the United Farm Workers Foundation. This uh, event was uh, geared towards the, you know, our farm workers. Uh, they were able to provide them with uh, PPE, how much needed, you know, masks, uh, hand sanitizers, uh, and resources. And we were able to feed, um, you know, a lot of people. We were provided, uh, we provided 600 free tacos to the community. Uh, so a lot of people came out. It was good. Um, you know, we'll continue working with the foundation, uh, United Farm Workers Foundation. They provide a lot of bring up, uh, bring a lot of resources to the community, especially our farm workers. Uh, they've been doing great work this past year, uh, working together with them. They actually go out to the fields and visit the people. Uh, they're also touching bases with a lot of the churches. Uh, so it, you know, they're doing uh, great, great work. So um, I think that work is very important. Uh, some of the things I've been working on um, with Jackie, I know we're gonna really get into this. I've been reaching out to some of the schools for our time capsule project uh, for our centennial um, celebration. Uh, so we're working on that, trying to get items from the schools uh, to be included in the time capsule. Uh, so it's very exciting. I think it was pretty neat and we'll be able to open it in 50 or 100 years and see what, what kind of stuff we had back in the day. Um, so um, I'll be reaching out to some other departments to see what um, they want to include in there. Um, I am working on a street renaming project. We're gonna uh, bring, I'll bring to council uh, um, that item later. Um, working on other community events during the summer. We'll announce a, a few events uh, here pretty soon. Also working on a sister, sister city project with a, a city in, in Mexico, um, specifically Churincio. I did reach out to Alejandra Pimentel, which is a Presidenta Municipal from over there. So um, looking forward to, to um, 
to making that relationship. Uh, there's a lot of people from that region that uh, migrated here many years ago. There's first, second, third generation, so it'll be neat to have that you know ongoing relationship. Um, and congratulations to Corporal Villarreal for the Officer of the Year. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it. I was in Washington, D.C., uh, but I am taking him out to lunch here pretty soon uh, to congratulate him. Um, and I believe that is all for me. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to our consent agenda. Items on the consent calendar are considered routine or non-controversial and will be enacted to one vote unless separate action is requested by the city manager or city council member. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless members of the city council or city manager request that specific item be removed. Council, is there any items you guys would like to uh, discuss? Um, for myself, I'll go ahead and uh, identify, identify item number 10 to be taken out for uh, discussion or presentation on it. Any other items? That was a, the same item that I wanted it to. Okay, perfect. So we'll tackle the consent calendar or agenda first. Um, Council, what are any motions? I move to approve the consent agenda. We have a motion by Council Member Jose Moran. Do we have a second? We don't have any motion to a second? A second. Okay, we have a second by Council Member King. Monica. Motion approved by a vote of four zero. Thank you. So we're going to go and go ahead and um, discuss item 10, which is adopt the resolution approving memorandum of understanding with Merced Union High School District, MUHSD, resolution approving a memorandum of understanding, MOU, between the Merced Union High School District and the City of Livingston for School Resource Officer Program and authorize the city manager to ex execute the agreement. Vanessa? Um, are any questions, Council, on this item? Council, you need specific questions? Yes, I have a question. So, <laughs> would, we, would we be hiring a new officer just for this position, or will we just transfer somebody from our department that way? This position, it's not hiring any, any new officers. We, have, uh, we will be redirecting one of our hired or in budgeted um, part-time reserves to, uh, this, to cover for uh, and to provide services for the school resource officer program. Uh, yes, so my question was around, uh, so this contract or this MOU is for four years. Um, in the past, has it been four years or two or three? This MOU is for five years. So um, if you look at it, it's 22, 23, 23, 24, 24, 25, 25, 26, four years. In the past, I, I believe what happened with the school is that they were trying to um, to get to get a school resource officer as soon as this fiscal year. However, um, when we first went on in this round of negotiation and when the MOU was first presented, it was it, it became um, a budget constraint uh, to or like a it it, it was draining our budget, so um, we had to go back to the negotiating table. Um, um, thankfully, our interim chief, um, Hale, was able to pro procure better terms in this MOU, so we are going through the 2026 school year. Okay, and, and so the other thing is uh, the fiscal impact, and in, in right now it's based on uh, the amount of $104,097.49. Considering that this is for four years, if that impact changes for us, can we go back and, and let them know that it's, that we need to reconsider or look at negotiations? If, you know, because right now, 
this is considering a part-time reserves officer. Um, that person might leave and then we have to put in a, you know, not a reserve and then some of the uh, actual costs might change for us. Um, what can we, uh, what's? So the agreement it's drafted, to my understanding, the agreement it's drafted, so we have the flexibility and we have the flexibility to continue the, uh, you know, like redirecting part-time officers uh, to this position. So at any event, if we are, if, if the, if, if the, um, if the part-time officer gets a new job or moves out of town, we w it is up to the city to uh, redirect somebody else. And at that point, we will be looking at redirecting another part-time reserve position that it will not become a drain to the city uh, general fund. And so, and we could also stay within that, that $104,000 um, commitment from from the school so the, the goal is for us not to to provide the services to work in partnership with the school but at the same time be able to be self-sufficient with this program okay and in the four-year option was that our preference their preference that you know of that was their um, their draft at the beginning okay. so we're honoring their draft knowing that it, we have already changed quite a, quite a few terms on this agreement with them. Okay, that's all I have for now. Um, any other questions, Council, at this time? Um, no. At this, um, I think the, if I heard correctly, it, the concern is that not only if there's the officer leaves or needs to be replaced or send somebody in there, but uh, obviously the cost or the wages, the cost of having an officer there increase over time, and um, I think that's what the question said. If obviously um, the cost to have an officer is more, um, you know, in two years, three years, four years, and it's going to cost more to have somebody there, do we have the opportunity to negotiate higher, higher contract, or is just that's where it's at? Absolutely, and I, I will say before I believe um, Chief Hill it's, has joined us on the phone, but I will say that, um, you know, like uh, along with the cost and the, and the reason why it was negotiated or uh, Chief Hill negotiated this contract to be flexible enough for our city to provide a, a reserve part-time officer to the school is um, it's, it's to minimize that burden of, um, you know, incurring overtime costs because once we have this part-time, the, the school has the flexibility to work with um, the school officer that is assigned to this program to, to draft a schedule that fits the needs of the school. So as far as extra costs, um, the contract is supposed, it, it's, it's meant to be self-sufficient and it's meant to be, to, be, to be able to provide the flexibility to the school and to the city to um, provide the coverage without incurring any outside cost that, it, um, that, it, that you have brought up, mm. such as overtime or, um, or anything else. So. Okay. Was this? Um, Mayor and Council, I am on the phone. If I could uh, jump in. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, the, uh, you mentioned something. This, so the, there was a prior agreement or um, something that was discussed with the previous police chief, is that correct? So we were able to go back and, and renegotiate, is that correct? Um, that is correct. The terms that were first presented, it was presented with uh, the city committing a full-time officer, uh, which really created a, a somewhat of a, a, a disadvantage to our budget. Um, our full-time officer, you're looking at somebody at the highest uh, step of the salary scale with full benefits and pension and, 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 and insurance and, and all this um, um, extra costs for a, um, an officer. We were looking at about $150,000. And this uh, MOU, um, the MOU is uh, committing 104000 So that's, that's when we were in the negotiating 
um, rounds with the Merced Union um, High School District. Um, and, and we are uh, very glad and, and very um, happy to be able to present this to council, that it's something that uh, we feel that meets the needs and, um, and promotes that collaboration with, um, with Merced Union High School District. And also it, um, it's advantageous for, for our city because we're not, we're, not, we're not putting a drain on our budget. We're actually bringing $104,000 of extra revenue. Thank you. Yeah, that was uh, obviously a concern that, you know, we were putting a full-time person and we were, you know, short that, Mayor, that amount. So, add real quick, um, so, first off, I apologize not being there. I had a medical procedure done today, um, but there is an understanding and it's actually written in the agreement where the principal at the high school will control the scheduling for that part-time officer. And they know when that $104,000 and, and change runs out, uh, they're done, if that makes sense. So for instance, on Friday nights when there's a football game, they're gonna adjust that schedule to accommodate regular scheduling so it doesn't incur overtime and things like that. Um, again, like Vanessa said, they're providing $104,000 and that's the budget that they have to work with with scheduling this officer. And in turn, we get that partnership with the school. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we're able to understand or that we were able to put a, um, a part-time officer there. So uh, uh, I'm glad we were able to get back on the table and, and have further discussions. So thank you. Any other questions by council? So to be clear, 2.3 here where it says not to exceed, and it's based on having a full-time, working overtime, full-time benefits. No. It's not written that way? No, this is um, 2.3, it's not to exceed $104,000. And um, the commitment is that we are providing a part-time officer with no benefit. So it is advantageous to, for the city to have that arrangement um, with, with, the, um, with the school district because um, that actually provides flexibility and it's advantageous to our general fund. Sounds good. Um, no, it's absolutely, I mean, it's a good partnership and obviously it's beneficial for the high school to have one of our officers there on duty, so. Any other questions or clarifications? We'll take it out to public for any any comment, public comment on this item. Okay, we'll bring it back. Anybody on the phone? All right, we'll bring it back to council uh, for any motions or direction. Any motions? Yes, I'll make a motion. Okay, we have a motion by Councilmember King. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll go ahead and second it myself. Monica? I'm missing a vote. Do you have any other questions? Oh. Motion approved by a vote of three and one abstain. Thank you. We're gonna go ahead and move on to discussion and potential action items. We have uh, so we have our Park Recs and Arts Commission vacancies we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, we have three items associated to that. We have item number 11, conduct interviews with applicants for the Parks, Recs, and Arts Commission vacancies. 
Uh, we have item number 12, council discussion of applicant pool credential and qualifications and item number 13, which is appoint the four volunteer regular commissioners and one volunteer alternate commissioner for a four-year appointment to the Parks, Recs, and Arts Commission. Um, we did conduct some interviews uh, last week um, of um, um, applicants um, for our Recreation Commission. Um, I know there's an applicant here tonight that was unable to attend last week. Um, so we'll give you an opportunity to, if council wants to ask questions or uh, at this time, since we do have the item on the agenda, to conduct interviews of applicants. Yep. Um, Gerardo, you wanna come up? <clears throat> it says, please introduce yourself. This, I'm Gerardo Aguilar. So uh, I'll, I'll, I just wanted to give you a heads up, so if you want to get, read it real quick. But I'm going to do a little quick reintroduction like I did last week. Um, so, um, so as you know, you're applying for a non-paid volunteer position with the Recreation Commission. Um, so it, the, the position is to collaborate with the commission, uh, professional and courteous manner. Uh, attend the meetings, which is held, they're held on the fourth Thursday of every month at 6 p.m. Um, I mean, they have a lot of events, so attend or partake in some of the commission-sponsored events. Uh, which, uh, part of the responsibilities is to make recommendations to the city council and uh, re regarding the recreation department and assist uh, park and recs programming ideas, fundraising, and po policy development. If selected, you will serve a four-year term, making your appointment effective through January 30th of 2026. Are you willing to take this commitment? Yes, sir. Okay, so well, then we're gonna continue on with the uh, interview. Uh, so the first question, please introduce yourself and tell us why you would be part, uh, why do you wanna be part of the commission? My name is Gerardo Aguilar, I'm a union carpenter and I've been coaching youth football for I believe three to four years and I also coach baseball and I'm currently involved with the ATV Park, and then it's for the children so they could have something else besides ball sports. And um, you know, I I am I wasn't born here. I mean I wasn't I didn't grow up here, but I moved here and all my relatives and all my family lives here as well. So I have deep roots in this community. Thank you, sir. We'll go to question number two. Describe the strengths or experiences you possess that will help advance the commission's goals and mission. Well, having three kids and having them go through sports, teaching them, you know, the value of being a good sportsman, being a, uh, having good character, you know, um, having good ideas and sharing the good ideas with uh, other other kids, and helping helping the youth, um, you know, get better at, at certain sports and uh, and um, what can I say? Uh, and just helping in general the youth to, 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 to do other things that normally they wouldn't get a chance to do. Thank you. We're gonna go ahead and move on to question number three. Please share some of the ways you will provide support to the commission. Well, I'll be providing my time and having good ideas and then um, how, basically just providing my, my time and, and my my know-how of sports, baseball, football, ATV sports, basketball. I mean, I got it. Thank you. Um, and that, um, just like last week, I gave the opportunity to council make any comments or questions, follow-up questions, anybody? Okay. Well, thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you. I don't think everybody else participated in the Mayor, interview. Mayor, for the record, um, the second applicant, Candace Egler, was unable to attend. Okay, thank you okay. so much. Um, so we're gonna, so um, I think everybody else that was interested was able to participate in the interviews. 
So uh, we'll go to item number 12, which is council discussion of uh, applicant pool credentials and qualifications. Uh, and just to check with the attorney's office, this needs to be conducted out here, right, in the public, in the public setting. Um, so I know there's several applicants. We went through uh, several interviews. Um, just so pe uh, the public is aware of the process, we were given obviously the questions to ask everybody the same questions. We were given a, a, a tool to be able to kind of get points uh, or grade the applicants based on their responses or in their application um, uh, related to uh, their ability to, to help out with the commission and, and partake in, in um, their mission and their goals. Uh, so we were able to, like I said, use that tool to help, help us, guide us to, um, to, appoint, uh, um, to appoint those applicants. Um, does council want to specifically discuss or any follow-up questions for the applicants? Um, anything else? Are all the applications that were submitted to us, are those applicants still vying for a position on the commission? There's Monica, Monica, I know you reached out to some. Yes, I did reach out to all 11 of them. Um, a few of them weren't unable to make it to the, meet, the previous meeting and this meeting, um, so. Did anybody that we know of uh, rescind their application? Did anybody that of the 11, uh, did they change their mind or, or did, were you unable to get a hold of? No. No, when I called them, there were two that weren't able to attend, so they um, withdrew their application, and um, the rest were not able to attend. It was uh, host. Let me look at it. May yeah, I, go ahead. If I may, uh, we con contacted all of the applicants and explained that part of the process is it was going to. Um, we were gonna have this open session with the interview and they were all given um, time slots. Um, I believe we had a, uh, participation from or, or not to participate in the interview process from um, most of the applicants with a few that Monica may, um, may have on record that uh, they may have changed their mind or have not been able to make it, but um, as far as process, we drafted the, the, the questions so it can be uniform to everyone. We provided this interview process so it's a platform that it, it is, um, that, it, that it's consistent um, for, for all of the applicants and, um, and, and the applications or the applicants that did not um, attend, they're deemed um, being not not um, forfeiting their um, their chance for consideration. Thank you. So yes, definitely, we want to make it as fair as possible and have, give it an opportunity to you know uh, answer some other questions, go through the interview process. Um, obviously, we're still working on a more concrete process moving forward. Um, but we uh, we understand people. Um, there's been uh, the need is there, and we need to appoint people. So. Um, that's why we wanted to just, uh, you know, get it, get it going and get it done. Um, if there's no discussion. Vanessa, uh, can you please repeat what your last statement? Sure. Um, the, the applicants were uh, notified that it, this was part of the process. To have something consistent, have an interview process for everyone, we drafted that, and if they were unable to attend, they would forfeit the consideration to be a, for appointment. Did you say forfeit? So if they were, are not in attendance, either the prior interview process or tonight's interview process, their application? If they did not want to do the um, interview process, that they could not, I mean, like if they're not present today, but they did the interview, that was part of the consideration for appointment. So if they did not attend, their application is forfeited. That's correct. We are not able to discuss their application as part of the process of appointment. They did not participate in the process of the interview. How many of the ap applicants were notified and actually told you that they would be, I mean, would be here, that did get the notice to 
the invite to come to council? All of them were notified. All of them were notified. I was not able to get a hold of Jaime, what's his name? Tofoya. No, sorry, it's uh, Mich James, James Mejia. That's, I called him several times and I left him a message giving him an opportunity to attend the previous meeting and this meeting and everyone else was informed and given both opportunities from the last meeting and this meeting. Perfect. Okay, uh, at this I have time. a question for legal. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Let's say if somebody didn't show up, can we still <coughs> nominate them? You don't have a formal process right now, so you could appoint, yes, okay. theoretically you could. Thank you. We're gonna go ahead and bring it up to the public. Comment, anybody wanna uh, say any words or even the applicants wanna say any, anything else? No? Okay, we'll bring it back to council. Um, if there's no further discussion, we're gonna go ahead and move on to item number 13, uh, which is appoint the four volunteer regular commissioners and one alternate commissioner. For this, um, you know the server. I mean, obviously, we know who participated in the interviews, who uh, came in, and, and were able to. You know, uh, council was able to ask some questions. Um, I think all of us reviewed the applications. Um, so I don't know if we want to make a motion. Um, one at a well, time, or attack with the alternate first. Yeah, so before, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. One, based on, if I remember correctly, based on our, our, on our one of our, la our previous meetings when this was discussed on, on, on the procedure, it was, I, if, I, if I'm correct, if I remember correctly, it was this council's recommendation and direction to be able to come up with a system that would be equitable for anyone that was applying. And part of those recommendations in that process was being present. So if, to me, if that is not followed, then It seems like there was should have been no reason to give direction at all, and just you know not have anything, any guidance, and just do, and and then just wait it until now, you know. So that's just my observation. And two, you know, it's 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 um it's good to see a lot of applicants willing to participate, and uh, it's good. Um, it's good to be able to have different points of view, different uh, backgrounds, because that's what makes any committee unique. And um, uh, if this is only one of many opportunities, there's plenty of more opportunities to participate. And even whoever, uh, for those that, you know, obviously with many applicants, I, I believe it's only five, four, and then one, um, four positions, right, Jackie? And then one and alternate. alternate, okay. So then it's only five. So I still encourage everyone else that applied and everyone else to still continue to participate even though they don't become part of, uh, of the commission because I think, you know, a lot of times uh, the commissioners, not necessarily they always have all the ideas, and sometimes the new ideas come from people, uh, from the residents or the people that are attending those meetings. So I encourage everyone to continue participating, not, not, not just uh, up, being up here. So um, considering their uh, skills and information on the um, applications. I move to approve, to consider for approval, or should we 
approve I one at a time? Or I think it'll be along? easier. I mean, I, I think it's because obviously we all heard uh, we have different tools, different gradings, the way we saw things. I think it'll be probably more than a Jackie. Yes. No, we can't. Yeah, we 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 can't go and we can't go uh, we can't go back there. We ha has to be done in a public setting. Is that correct, legal? Yeah. So so we we can't do that. Um, but we got an opportunity to use our tool, and I think it'd be, um, I think it'd be probably better just some you know point or um, one by one. I would say probably be um, better that way. At least I would see it. I know it's. Uh, you know, it, it's difficult. I think, uh, just going back to your comment, Councilman Ramonan, um, to my understanding, same thing. I think it's it's important that whoever's interested uh, go through a process, which included an interview. Um, I know sometimes it's hard, there's short notices, uh, people have different things going on and, you know, scheduling and, um, you know, life and everything else, but I think it's it was part of the process, so we have to respect that. Um, whoever was able to make it participate and, and come to the interview in one of these two opportunities. Uh, so I, I really believe that's part of the process and we should respect that. Um, and then, but yeah, I think it should be uh, one at a time and I'll, I'll get it started. I think um, I'll make a motion um, to appoint Christine Fernandez as for one of the regular uh, commissioners. I'll second that. So we have a motion by myself and a second by Council Member Jose Moran. Council Member Soto? Yes. Council Member Moran? Yes. Council Member King? Yes. M Mayor Aguilar? Yes. Motion approved by a vote of four, zero. So, um, for the second position, or for another position, I move to approve uh, Suki, and I'm sorry, the last name. Jo Joel. Joel, yes, for a... Um, for the one of the permanent position? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, the regular position. For, yes, for the regular position. So, we have a motion? I'll second. We have a second by Councilmember Maria Soto. Council Member Soto? Yes. Council Member Moran? Yes. Council Member King? Yes. Mayor Aguilar? Yes. Motion approved by a vote of 4 0. Maria, Maria want to make some? Go ahead. Or. Yeah, I would like to make a motion. Go ahead. For Gerardo oh. Aguilar for the four year term. So we have a motion by uh, Council Member King. For Gerardo Aguilar, you said? Yes. I'll second that. We have a second by uh, Councilwoman Maria Soto. Council Member Soto? Yes. Council Member Moran? Abstain. Council Member King? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Garcia? Okay. Who? Oh, sorry. Mayor Aguilar. Sorry. Yes. Motion approved by a vote of 3-0. Next, I move to uh, approve uh, uh, Hilda to the next uh, four-year position. So we have a motion by Councilmember Jose Moran for Hilda Lopez. I'll go ahead and second it. Councilmember Soto. No. Council Member Moran? Yes. I'm just, can, can you repeat the name? What was this motion for? Hilda. Who? Hilda Lopez. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. I'm sorry, I hear the name. Mayor Aguilar? Yes. Motion approved by a vote of 3 0. 3 1. 3 1, sorry. Three, one. And then I'll make a motion for the alternate for Omar Herrera. 
No second. Council Member Soto? Yes. Council Member Moran? Yes. Council Member King? Yes. Mayor Aguilar? Yes. Motion approved by a vote of four zero. Thank you. And I just want to repeat what I've said before. Um, this is just one opportunity to uh, get involved. There's many opportunities. Uh, there'll be even more opportunities moving forward. Uh, we appreciate everybody that applied and, and took an interest um, in becoming and more involved in your city and your community. Uh, so we really appreciate that. Um, and we commend you for taking that step. Um, there's always opportunities to get involved and participate. And uh, even with the Recreation Department, you, know, you don't have to be a part of the commission to be involved and, and, and partake in everything that we're doing. So uh, I encourage you to keep on, on volunteering, participating, because um, it's, it's needed. You know, it's a small town. We, we operate a lot with volunteers and, and people that are willing to give the time to the community and the kids. So, um, you know, the rec commission is very special to me. Uh, I was a liaison for a long time and I initially brought it forward to establish it once more. Uh, so I've um, been doing great, great work throughout the years and I uh, look forward to seeing what else the commission could accomplish together uh, with the community and the council. Um, so congratulations to everybody that was appointed tonight. Uh, we, are we going to have a formal like swearing? Do we do that with the recreation? We should, right? We do a swearing for rec commissioners. We've never done no, before. you want to do it? <laughs> we should totally do it. <laughs> so we'll do it here pretty soon. Either, most likely, the next council meeting. We, we normally don't do it for no? commissioners, but we can bring them forward in our next okay. meeting and present our new recreation commissioners. Okay. So that yes. For everyone. Let's do that. And I know that Jackie will be having, um, will be co contacting each one of the newly appointed commissioners to provide some onboarding Orientation. Um, information. So you, you guys will all get, I'm sure you already know everything that's going on with the city, but you'll get to know the department, the mission, and the expectations of the commission um, in a lot more detail. Excellent. So congratulations once again. We're going to move on to item number 14. Um, item number 14, discussion and direction regarding fireworks show funding. Yes, Mayor, we have a request um, to bring back after pandemic um, for two years, uh, this uh, 4th of July fireworks show has uh, been um, has been shut down. And uh, now that we are looking at um, getting back to a little bit more normalcy from pre-pandemic or like to what pre-pandemic levels um, in, a in actions and and um, in, in programs, uh, we would like to, staff would like to get direction on a fire fireworks show um, for the city. Um, we don't have this item budgeted in the, um, in our current 21-22 budget. So if we are looking at anything, we would be uh, doing, we will be bringing forward uh, with your direction, a budget amendment and, um, and, and would potentially be um, using of general fund reserves. So um, I, I'm seeking direction and, um, and we provide this for, for discussion. Thank you. Um, I know this is something that's constantly and regularly asked um, out in the community if we got, we're having a fireworks show and a lot of people are wanting a fireworks show. I know it's, um, I know it's a lot of work and I, I believe we're not looking at a, a full on festival with vendors and, and you know, a carnival or anything like that. I think people are just wanting a, a fireworks show um, for everybody to be able to do their own barbecue and, uh, you know, hang out with their families and then enjoy the firework display show. Um, so yeah, that's one of the 
you know, one of the things that is I'm asked on a regular, ongoing basis, text messages, calls, in person. Um, I know, uh, Maria, you might have, might have more information about, um, obviously you worked with the 4th of July committee and that's something that um, you guys worked towards, I mean, you guys, you know, you participated specifically with that uh, organization to, you guys organized the 4th of July festival. So um, I know um, I've touched bases with you about that. Um, do you have any information if there's even a possibility of having somebody come out um, to do actual display? At this point, the answer is yes. Perfect. Um, so, you know, uh, it, I wanted to bring it to council to have that discussion if that's something we wanted to do. Um, I know in the past we supplemented the 4th of July committee uh, with funds towards the show. Um, and we're, we're not asking for, you know, 50,000 or anything like that. Um, I know in the past we've done like, we, we used to, you know, promote saying that it's the biggest show in the valley or whatever. We're, I don't think we're asking for anything like that. But at least something for the public, for the people to enjoy. Um, especially after a couple of rough years where everything was locked down and, um, you know, there was, uh, we didn't have anything going on. Um, I think it will be a good way to to bring people out and celebrate and, um, you know, obviously the restrictions have been lifted, a lot of restrictions, um, um, but I think it'll be a good thing for the community, just bring everybody together and celebrate and have a good 4th of July and keep our people in town, um, you know, barbecuing, buying food here and um, instead of going out. So I don't know what the council thinks, the rest of the council, what, if they support something like this. Yeah, I agree with you, Mayor. We've always had the best show in the last few years due to COVID. We weren't able to have it, so definitely we need one this year. Especially being our centennial year, I think it's important also. I know we're gonna have our big centennial celebration uh, in September and, and all that, but I think uh, um, this is also important for the community. Uh, any other comments by council or any So just for um, clarification, is this, okay, so what is the budget? What w is there like a rough idea on the budget? Two, uh, last year when we were working on the budget, there was, I think there was only, there was only left like $2,300. Obviously this was not budgeted for. Mm -hmm. um, if it was not budgeted, it was because we didn't have any extra funds. We only had $2,000 left. Um, to who's gonna like be in charge of organizing it, putting it together? Is that gonna be city staff, um, which department, or, or who, who will be responsible to make it work? Um, and you know, so but other than that, I think. Uh, do we have a rough idea on a budget or, or you know, uh, uh, in the past, uh, this has been more or less led by uh, the 4th of July committee, which was totally separate from, from the city. Um, and whether or not in the past, the city has had uh, supported uh, with some of the expenses after the event, uh, I, th I think I want to take that separately and not consider like, you know, we did pay for it before or we, we, pro we or the city assisted it mm -hmm. in some of the funding. Um, and was there an intent or an interest from the 4th of July committee at all this year uh, to put it together? So right now, those are just some of my questions. Absolutely, I know. I think uh, obviously within with the last year's budget, I think the situation is now different. I think we're uh, in a much better financial situation. Well, yeah. Well, during the last budget, we had every position fi filled. So without having a police chief, public service director, human resource, and a finance director, I think we should have more than two thousand in our funds. Yes, I think we're in a better financial situation than that. 
Correct, and those are good. Those are all good questions and comments. I am looking for direction, mm -hmm. um, and you're correct, Council Member Moran. It is something that it was not put in the budget, and even though we have we have budgeted expenditures to pay for salaries for positions that may be vacant at the moment, we don't have the line item for this event. So that's when when I when I share earlier is um, that. It, once I get direction, we will bring an item back to the council so then we can approve that um, dollar amount. And um, in the event that we don't have any kind of savings other uh, in, in other pockets of the city, uh, we, would be, we would be using or I will be uh, tapping into our general fund reserves. Um, so with that, I will also like to know what it, what is a threshold that the council may feel comfortable with uh, for, for, for the city to um, enter or entertain an agreement for fireworks show? Um, is, it, is it a $15,000 threshold? I'm hearing that 50,000, it's, it's, it's not the show that you are looking for. So, I mean, like it's gotta be somewhere in the middle and I would, I I would like to get direction from, from all of you to have that, it, that that kind of idea of what I will be, I'll be, I will be bringing back to uh, the council that you will feel comfortable um, uh, securing funding for um, for this event. Um, and I think that you know it is true. In the past, the Fourth of July committee has put this um, this this program in in um, in place on behalf of the. The community and the city has um, provided a, um, a a level of support that kind of said, you know, you're going to try to get sponsorships or try to fundraise and anything that that it, that it, that you are um, that you are in the red. We will make you whole for this um, project or event. Um, I know that when we had this conversation with our city staff. <gasps> absent the 4th of July committee, we would have to dedicate staff resources that are also working on centennial preparation. So it will be putting a strain on them. And I appreciate that all of, um, that the council, what I'm hearing, the consensus is that it's not a big show or carnival or anything like that. But at the same time, it will take some, some resources from our public works um, staff to uh, like fence off some of the, um, the, 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 the the area so the people can barbecue and um, and the, the vendor can set up the display show at some time in the day and, um, and, and some effort from our recreation department. So um, with, with that, I, I would like to get direction. What okay. is the threshold? that you would feel comfortable with us um, securing for a vendor, because we know that time is of the essence, so yes. the sooner the better, at least for this kind of event. Council Member, can you have a question? Yeah, I got a question. Council Member Soto, in the past, I know you were involved in this. How much would a 30-minute show cost? Do you have an idea? It's not necessarily the, the amount of time that they put in, it's the... No, I'm talking about the fireworks. How much would that cost? to purchase like a 30 minute In show. the past, something like that would be about roughly 35. 35 to 50,000 is what we've had um, provided to our pyrotechs to have a firework display for the city of Livingston. However, back in those days, it was because we were the biggest show in the valley. At this point, a $10,000 show would be okay, but 15,000 would be sufficient to put a decent show to coordinate with a company. Yeah, I'm okay with that number too, 15,000. I'm okay with that as well, um, and like I think I think we all uh, understand. Um, but obviously, it's time sensitive, but also strain that could potentially be on our department. 
So I don't think we're asking for, like I said, a carnival or full on, uh, you know, party or whatever you want to call it. You're um, correct, but Mayor. Yeah. As part of trying to be behind the scenes on this project, we're not going full blown as in the past. It took up a lot of time and energy with the least amount of volunteerism from our community, but it was a great turnout every single year. And um, the funds did come in along the way to pay and reimburse and give a big portion of that and pay for the, the vendors and the carnival paid for itself um, and the entertainment. So this year, just want to reiterate that it is just going to be a fireworks show should we secure funding for that. And we can work on some other discussions if there's going to be a few vendors that we want to invite. Again, those were that those are going to be separate, but for right now as a fireworks, um, I don't even want to, there is no committee. <laughs> it's a work done by at least three people maybe um, that would help organize and to work out some of the details, location, but the first item would be the funding. the funding so that we can actually have a show. So if that is the direction, I mean, that is okay with the council, that's, I'm putting it out there for that budgeted item, to, to budget that item. Okay, and I think, uh, I think there'll and be another plenty. And thing, I'm sorry, um, we will also be asking for sponsorships and donations. Again, we're not letting that, and we're not gonna try to, to make this a full funded uh, event on the city portion. We will be out there asking for donations and sponsorships from members of the community and others, resources that we've worked with in the past. So it's hopefully we can offset the cost of the fireworks. Perfect, and I think there's um, the there's there's a lot of people I think willing to volunteer and help out. Um, I, I'm willing to help out in any way possible. I know you guys, uh, as the Fourth of July committee, operated and with a it was a small group of you guys that made it happen. It was like three or four members uh, that were able to make that happen. So I, I know that um, that's possible. Um, go ahead. Uh, thank you. So uh, I was just wondering, and maybe uh, this is for legal, um, and since we're looking at uh, direction, is this something that, that because I, I, up to a certain point, I do want to hear from the departments that might end up getting involved and, and see what, you know, like in this case, public works is here, recreation is here, PD is not here. I don't know if Chief's on, on the phone, but uh, I would like to kind of hear a little bit uh, in, in, so to be able to provide further direction from myself, from my point of view, would that be okay? He's saying yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, if, if, if we can have, I, I would like to ask uh, the departments to kind of provide some feedback on, on how, you know, because up to a certain point, to me, you know, the, the amount being Consider for the fireworks is one thing, but also, uh, I, I, you know, it's, it, it takes more than just the fireworks. It's going to take uh, overtime. It's going to take resources from the city. So it's not just going to be fifteen thousand dollars that we need to consider here, but rather uh, everything else that is going to include uh, to put something like this together. And, and, and I think it's only fair in that, uh, to be able to consider that, at least from my point of view. So wondering if. Uh, uh, the departments have input or from your, your point of view. Um, Go ahead, Vanessa. No, I, I was gonna, going to say, uh, Council Member Moran, that yeah, nor, I mean, Jackie and Tony, they've been here in the city for a very long time, so they are very much the holders of the 
the, the, the resources and that historical knowledge. So uh, when we did have uh, a conversation on, on this project, um, they, they were able to share some insight on the amount of um, the, the time that it takes, not just uh, during the event, but prior to the event. And, um, and, and, and you're correct. I mean, like the vendor for the fireworks show is one cost, but we, uh, we would also be um, accounting for the cost that it will be taking to our staff to, to, to make this happen. And I will definitely provide that, um, that estimate and breakdown when we bring this item forward. But I would um, let them share their historical expertise on what the fireworks in yesteryears. <laughs> I have to laugh because this just to show is something that our department has wanted for 12 years, maybe just a show and not all the other stuff that goes with it. And so I know that the community will be happy that they're having something. Um, I, you know, thank goodness we've had Julio, which I actually talked to this week and he said if he didn't have to fundraise that he would be happy to help in any way that he can. Um, I know that there's no way that I can fundraise anymore. People run when they come near me because they know I'm gonna ask them for money. <laughs> right, Tom? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, it is a lot of work. I mean, the things to think about would be porta potties. It, so, I mean, if we have the $15,000 show, then we have the porta potties. If depending on if we have it downtown or whether we keep it at Max Foster, there's still going to be traffic control that we're going to need overtime for the PD because it is a holiday. Public you know, works for barricades, road closures, uh, depending on, like you said, if porta potties, we usually staff our own call staff for cleaning restrooms. Volunteers help out as well, but most of it will also be trying to depending on if we're going to use that lot where we have a parking lot. Uh, we need to water it down before the event so we don't create a... Well, in the past, we actually have had to not leave that for parking, but then we have to get permission from the landowner that's the 25 acres on the other side, closer to the freeway from where we launch the fireworks. And so that needs to get going right away if we need to get permission for that. So I know that too, somebody had said that they had talked to the fireworks people and they're on board and... Um, Julio told me that they never even got back to him. So it would be, we need to, if we're gonna do it. The other thing I was thinking is maybe if we combine the effort for, because I had budgeted the $10,000 for a show for the Sweet Potato Festival, is that maybe they'll give us some kind of a break for having two shows that are smaller. I mean, I don't know, we can try. That's a good but idea. I am, I, I do have a much needed vacation planned since COVID, my husband's ready to kill me because mm -hmm. I'm gone all the time. Yeah. So, you know, for the sake of holy matrimony, um, I will not be here from the 1st to the 15th of July. Yeah. And so that just leaves Tony when we have soccer coming up and we're still getting ready for the Sweet Potato Festival. And the time capsule event for, our, you know, I mean, we just have a lot of stuff yeah. going. Um, so there might be a few prep things that we can help do. Yeah, but, but I think our, yeah, our expectation, we're not having a, you know, we don't want a festival or anything like that. Um, so the men, I mean, we're hoping for minimal participation. I mean, from recre well, uh, recreation, obviously set up for road and, and PD and, and, fi and fire and all that stuff. But uh, uh, at least my ex expectation would be the least work for you guys as possible. We just want a simple fireworks show. Um, because uh, I understand it's a busy year with the centennial, so my you know my expectation is not that recreation is going to be out there asking for donations or anything like that. I don't want to give you additional work, um, but uh, obviously we've been doing it for a very long time, so we're experts in uh, the setup, at least part of it. You know, uh, we can set up. You know, be prepared for road closures if needed, um, traffic. Um, but we've been doing it for a long time, so. Um, I think we know what to do and how to move forward if we, if we do decide to do it. Um, but like I said, if uh, Julio and a few other people are willing to help out, uh, it would, you know, um, I think it, it, it's possible. I think we could totally do it. I mean, we've been doing it for a long time, so. 
when I saw any other, do you think you have enough direction? Um, I need a nod from everyone. Oh, okay. Like so, <laughs> from council. <laughs> council member Kang. What are you? are good? He's good? Council member Jose? At this point, yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it would be great to have all of that information so that we can further discuss it and bring it all together. And Council member Maria Soto. Once we know that if we've got the item financially secured, we can put everything else into place. I've been working with Julio uh, in, the mean, in the meantime and uh, recently, so we can work on what council would like. And yeah, I'm definitely advocating for a show. <coughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to, we're gonna take it out for a public comment. <laughs> Does anybody have any public comment on this? Anybody on the phone? Okay, we're gonna bring it back, and so we've got direction. Um, so looking forward to having further discussion and making this happen for the community. Um, item number 15, discussion and direction on assigned council to an ad hoc committee for firework ordinance updates. So um, I know during our special meeting, we had an item uh, regarding a firework ordinance update. Um, so I know we came to the conclusion that it'll be uh, beneficial to come uh, put together an ad hoc committee of two council members to work with our departments, fire, PD, uh, everybody that, that you know is affected um, to be able to come up with a recommendation to bring to council if so does uh, that ad hoc committee thinks it's necessary to update our ordinance. Uh, it is an ordinance change. It would require a public hearing process. We did discuss that. Obviously, the 4th of July is around the corner. It would probably wouldn't take effect. Um, for this 4th of July, we discussed that it was still important to to be proactive and, and send education out, maybe in our utility bills, for example, in regards to uh, firework safety and our ordinance. Um, so still be proactive and, and at the same time work with this ad hoc committee for an uh, ordinance update uh, in the future. Um, so today we'll be discussing the committee, how to put it together, who volunteers. I know during the last council meeting, uh, during our special meeting, Council Member Jose Moran volunteered uh, to be part of this committee. Um, so any other information that I missed? Uh, no? no? Perfect. Um, Direction from council to okay. form this committee. So, Jose, uh, council member Jose Moran, you still interested in this, uh, be part of this ad hoc committee? Uh, yes, I'm still interested. And um, so, uh, besides two council members, uh, do we have an idea like how many, how many members uh, besides staff do we have? Are we considering residents or what would be the, the makeup? of the, the committee. Sorry, Zach, go ahead. Well, normally an ad hoc committee, it's a working group and it's, it's comprised of the um, staff members and the council members so we can work together, get a recommendation back to the council. So it's, yeah, it's uh, as far as I understand it in other ad hoc committees, yeah, it's a two council member committee um, which seek participation from the departments um, to work, is that Tom, is that correct, legally? Mm -hmm. um, so we have one volunteer. Um, any other council member want to participate in this ad hoc committee? So I think I, I heard Raul Garcia <laughs> volunteering, is that right? <laughs> um, I think at this point you can volunteer or voluntold. Yeah, so um, no, I'll, I'll partake. I'll be part of the committee. Um, I don't want to put it on Garcia. I don't know what his schedule's like or if he has anything going on, so uh, I, won't, I won't do that. But I'll participate. Okay, so we're bringing it out for public comment. Uh, anybody have any comments on this item? 
All right, we'll bring it back to council. So um, it sounds like we have two volunteers for ad hoc committee regarding the firework ordinance update. Uh, and we'll get together and um, move forward in regards to scheduling a meeting, uh, what our goals will be, and what are we set to accomplish and reach out to the departments. Um, so it, uh, ad hoc committee is a short committee where it's tasked for something sp very specific which in this case is the ordinance change or update. Uh, so that's gonna be the target of this committee. Uh, so we'll stay in contact. All right, we're gonna move on to item number 16, discussion and direction to assign council to an ad hoc committee for homelessness. So this is another committee that actually was brought up or talked about uh, months ago. Um, I know there were, been, uh, there were efforts made to you know, address, uh, address the situation, I mean, we, um, I think countywide, it's, it's, it's something that other jurisdictions are trying to address and, and tackle. Um, I know there was efforts made with, uh, in collaboration with like the Sheriff's Department. Um, I know Garcia was out there and uh, by the river and, and making those efforts and outreach with uh, different agencies. Uh, Caltrans were also recently around, uh, here um, last week. Um, so there's a lot of going on, a lot of efforts being made. Uh, last time we had talked about putting something together, um, a plan, a vision of how to better use the resources together with other jurisdictions or county and, and uh, bring some recommendation to council to move forward with that, those efforts. Um, uh, but we would never, I, I think we'd never follow, really follow up uh, formally uh, for this. Uh, I know Garcia has been staying uh, in communication uh, with the county and um, some agencies, you know, advocating uh, for them to come out here and, and, and address that issue. So, um, so this is just a formal, same thing, formal process of having an ad hoc committee to really work, uh, co you know, come up with a plan or um, a guide to where, uh, where the city should address uh, some of the issues um, regarding homelessness in, 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 the, in the city. Um, so on this one, I am going to volunteer Garcia <laughs> participate because he has been involved in that. I'll volunteer as well. Okay, so we have uh, Mayor Portem Garcia and Councilwoman Soto um, for this ad hoc committee. Um, and once again, this is just a specific committee of two council members um, that were, that are gonna target or address um, homelessness and, and come, come back to council with uh, a working plan. I'll take it out to no. the public. Just in case Garcia can do it, I'll be the backup. Okay, sounds good. Um, we'll take it out for public comment, anybody? All right, we'll bring it back to council and uh, Vanessa. Um, yes, Mayor, just so I can understand what is the purpose of our ad hoc committee that we're creating here. We are targeting homelessness mm -hmm. and we would like your, what is your, um, what is the, the goal for this plan or guide on how the city should address issues? That's what yeah. I hope. So to. yeah, so like the conversation during one of the council meetings we had uh, was presented to us that they had gone out to the riverfront with different agencies, the sheriff's department, okay. um, provided resources, offered vouchers, stuff like that. Um, so we, uh, during that discussion was, uh, you know, was brought up that the city should have a better understanding of what the issue is. Um, um, but understanding what kind of resources the city could provide uh, or partner with uh, agencies. So I think the vision for this committee will be coming up with a, Would like a, a, a plan or a document perhaps or, or something the city could actually, um, actually do in regards to okay. addressing uh, this issue. Maybe uh, putting more resource towards uh, vouchers, more resource, more partnership with uh, county agencies, um, you know, more outreach, uh, maybe start establishing a nonprofit or whatever the case may be. So it's just, it's, it's very, it, it's hard to really put a specific goal. I think it's more just understanding the whole issue of homelessness, what specifically is happening in Livingston um, and to better help the situation. Okay, since we're our committee needs to have a, sp a specific um, target or goal. Uh, would you 
uh, would you say that potentially providing or bringing back to the council um, an educational uh, presentation with resources to understand the issue and what are the resources and available. Ha and have an action plan. And okay, understand the issues, have resources available and maybe at that point um, some recommendations as far as an action plan, mm -hmm. um, just because action plans would potentially require funding to make those make that happen, and uh, we we will bring at that point those recommendations. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to council direction on future agenda items. Does anybody have any future agenda items? I know that I. I, I am working on, like I said, the time capsule item, uh, street renaming item. I know I've, I've talked to Leo about this, and um, I know there's uh, a few other items regarding the tobacco issue that we're working on um, that we um, we worked on also by our attorney's office. Uh, so well, there's a few items that'll be coming forward. Anything else, council? Uh, yes, um, I would like to uh, for staff to, and I can help with that, um, bringing to council sometime soon in regards uh, an item regarding the uh, what I mentioned earlier, and the presentation just happened to kind of connect with it, the uh, re residential loan replacement program, um, and uh, one of the organizations that can help that can help with that program is self-help. So, and I know that we had other programs running or working with them, so uh, it, it's already it, it's already a, uh, someone that, that we know and that we have worked with, and they, they have a program that's called the uh, Residential Lawn Replacement Program, uh, which basically pays to replace the lawn and not use water or, or very minimal water, which will help the city in the long run, but it's called the uh, re Residential Lawn Replacement Program. Thank you, and then I, I know our, um, I, I know there's probably some budget workshops coming up soon, right? That is correct, we are preparing for budget. All right, so at this time we're gonna go ahead and adjourn our meeting at 9.09, oh no, we're gonna go into session now.